welcome to this edition of Elven Home in which uh, first of all we go to the uh, War Memorial which is now complete and is on the layout uh, and then uh, one or two other things about the uh, consequences of putting the War Memorial on the layout and the way in which the townscape um, has changed and also uh, at the end a cavalcade of the engines that I have. I did one some episodes ago, over a year ago I think, and more things have joined the fleet so um, you get to see all the engines in a cavalcade at the end and I'll come back and speak to you at the end. But what I'll we'll go to now is a clip of me speaking when I started off doing the War Memorial uh, about what I had in mind. I'll speak to you again at the end. What I have in my head uh, is that the Tommy sits surrounded by a large structure which itself sits on a, on a raised platform uh, with a border in, as a, in the centre of a square uh, with posts with chains between them to mark the boundary of the border and with the ability to walk up to the, the monument uh, from each of the four sides of the square. Well here it is the final version of the War Memorial uh, just before this uh, clip started I played me talking about what I had in mind when I was designing uh, this model and I'm very pleased to say that this is very much what I had in mind um, and I'm really quite pleased to have, uh, have, have produced it. Um, from the last time that you saw it when I was fixing the posts on uh, I finally settled on a colour for the memorial um, which is a Humbrol paint. It's the roof carriage white. I think it's RC413 but I'll put a note up at this point to say which, uh, which paint colour it is. Um, which I suppose is an off-white. It looks more like grey to me. Um, and that worked really really quite well once it went over the top of the grey primer. Uh, and I'm, I, that's come out in, in the kind of colour um, at some point I might weather this, but I think I've said already that my weathering skills are still nascent, uh, if non-existent. And I really don't want to spoil this by weathering it and then mucking it up. Uh, in the end I went for nothing more than the dates of the uh, Great War, which were, are at the top, uh, which is where obviously they didn't expect to have to put 39 and 45 on. So those were added as an afterthought below the, the two wreaths. Uh, and I think they do look like a kind of ornament, ornamentation of a wreath, even though they are uh, just parts of uh, the kit that I mentioned before. Um, when I was earlier looking at this, I was talking about putting light in the top here. Um, and in the end, I decided not to do that. Um, Partly because I thought that any light that was in the top here would actually shine principally out of here rather than shining down onto the, onto the soldier. Um, I wasn't entirely sure actually whether um, they would have lit it in that way anyway. Um, and I'd also, by the time I'd made this part, which is now solid of course, um, getting wires to run down and through um, if I was going to do that I should have thought about that before I put all the milliput in. Um, but also I was worried about where it was going to be sited on the layout and that that might be um, just too much light for a, a built up area. But where the, where the model has now moved to as you've seen and I'll, I, I'll go back to explain a bit more about how that layout's uh, coming out. Um, I think I may be able to make use of some spotlights that I've seen um, that may be able to light this because it's it's a bit away from the from the town. So lighting may return, but spot lit from outside the boundary of the of the square. Um, the lettering is nothing more than fox transfers. I can't remember which um, uh, font I went for now. It's a Gill font, I think. But again, I'll put up a note at this point about what the uh, what the the lettering was that I used. Um, the inside of the model, I don't know if you can quite, if I can get the light to shine, no I can't, it's typical. Um, I've painted the inside, oh you can just about see it there I think, if I come a bit closer maybe. The inside has been painted with copper, so the dome and the inside of the four struts are painted with copper, um, which I think if I do manage to light it will help actually reflect the light quite well, which it's absolutely refusing to do now, but there we are, can't be helped. 
so that really completes the build of this. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it. I'm really pleased with the result. Uh, and uh, I think it will look really good, particularly once I get it on the layout uh, and with the thoughts I have about how this is going to be set in the landscape. And the next shot will be back on the layout because I'm going to talk you through uh, the changes that have come about in the town plan as a consequence of needing to find a place for this. So I'll speak to you again in just a moment. Here we are back on the layout and you can see where the war memorial stands uh, or where it will now stand um, at the edge of the town um, and I've developed further my thinking about what the layout now of the town plan will be because of course all, the whole of that area used to be the industrial um, estate. So if you don't mind this pointer so that I can do this from behind the camera uh, and not get actually in the way of uh, what's going on. The first thing is that the, town, the, the War Memorial sits there uh, with the Town Hall beside and the area from about here round is going to be grassed and landscaped so that that sits in, a, in an, an area that was cleared specifically to be able to put the War Memorial in uh, from old industrial units and a few uh, slums. Um, the area to the right here is going to be a fire station which is going to be my next scratch build. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a moment so you can see the emerging plans and I will um, film the building of the fire station which I have in mind to be a kind of 1930s deco affair there's plenty of them around uh, the country um, and I've seen one Acton which is bigger than I need but uh, and various bits and pieces are winging their way to me to be able to, to plan the layout out but I'll speak about that in a minute uh, one of the biggest changes has been for the uh, gasometer or the gas holder uh, here in that this whole area now is going to become the gas works. Um, looking online at what is required in a gas works, um, I had sort of quite a bit because you need a boiler house um, obviously to burn the coal um, to uh, create the gas. And you also need various other things, including a purifier and a condenser. And at the back there, if I zoom in a little bit, you will see a purifier, uh, which is this thing here, uh, and the condenser. And there's also a, a water transfer thing, um, which I can't remember the name of it. But what I'll do at this point, I'll take some separate photographs of those so you can see them. They're Hornby Little End uh, models. Um, from their gasworks uh, set um, and when I looked at the set about the only things I didn't have were those two things because the other things were a gas holder, a boiler house, uh, a store and you'll see you can just about see there if I zoom back out again this here is one of the uh, workshops that comes with the engine shed kit which I don't actually have a space for but that will do far, quite as well as offices or a store for the uh, gas works. So that's going to be um, become the gas works and that will be fed by a road as you can see if I come down here 
I've cleared a lot of the stuff out that was that was here. The road is going to emerge from the uh, from a tunnel and will drive off through here first of all with a spur coming off to go along away and under the bridge and there'll be a turning to go under this arch to take it into the gasworks. The road then is going to raise up and you can see the black marks where I've drawn where I roughly think the road will be here and then it will come down a, 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 on an incline to meet up with the arch here so the road the incline will start just after the viaduct and at the moment certainly the um, warehouse will stay where it's going to be not sure about the factory up there I'll, I'll have a think about that it may work because I may be able I've got a one of the link bridges that comes with the Metcalf kits I may be able to link those two buildings so that there would be a link between them um, and that might work um, not sure because I'm not sure how you get access to the to the factory at the back and I don't want to drive a road between the uh, town hall and the um, work and the war memorial the area um, between the gas holder and where the fire engine and the road will be is probably going to be more municipal buildings of some description or other um, and you can see that the old factory entrance which used to go with the boiler house kit is now the grand entrance for the railway um, and I think that will go really quite nicely so that's now how the town plan is going to be um, and the next thing just very quickly is to take you through the emerging thoughts about building the fire station and what I think it will look like uh, and then we will get on to having some trains running um, with the cavalcade so speak to you again in just a moment. Well, here you can see uh, an image taken from Google Maps of Acton Fire Station. I was Googling various um, 1930s style because I'm keen that the buildings on Elvenholm are representative of the whole period over which the town, uh, or Weathertop rather, the town has been in existence. Uh, and most of the Metcalf kits, <coughs> um, of the kind that I've built anyway, really are all sort of Victorian in design as would be expected for when the town was was founded um, but for the fire station uh, I want that to be a more recent building uh, and 1930s Art Deco would also go with the rough sort of um, architectural style on which the War Memorial itself has been built. Now Acton Fire Station as you can see is a substantial um, fire station there's room for seven appliances there very many more than I would need uh, and it looks a bit a bit too boxy for me but it is very much of its time um, certainly late 20s 30s pretty well uh, art deco in style but it gave me the inspiration for the broad sort of look that I'm I was wanting um, to achieve uh, and uh, for this point this is going to be a short section because I'm waiting on some things from uh, York Model Railways and PD models which will give me the windows and doors and that will enable me to settle the final design but if I come down onto the desk um, this is uh, one to one in size if I put uh, a knife in to give you an idea of scale so this will be a fire station for three appliances and there will be uh, an area above the fire station, above where the appliances are, which will be the rest area where the uh, fireman would be. I'm not yet sure whether I'm going to try and actually put a fireman's pole and a, um, a hole for firemen to come down in, but I might do. That might be fun with an, uh, an office block at the side. Uh, and as my rough attempt at sketching it to give some more of a 3D look. I think I'm going to put this roof on. Um, maybe a bit classical in view actually but I'll, I'll see as I start building it because um, I'll be able to adapt the um, design once I've got the various bits and pieces. Uh, overall it's going to be about um, 16 centimeters long. Um, this one on the left isn't very helpful because it's really looking at it from the side but the overall length will be where my two fingers are there. Let's just pull this into shot a bit better. Uh, and that will be the size of the building which is enough to be able to put a um, one of the Oxford die-cast 1940s uh, Dennis F12 I think for those who are aficionados of fire appliances 
uh, with the idea of course that there will be doors at the back so that the engines come in from this side and go round and drive in through the back to be ready for the next time they need to go out. But I'm looking forward to uh, having a go with that and starting to fill in that area around about by the by the station. So that's going to be the next build. As I said earlier, I will uh, video the build and the design as it goes along. So you can see how I go about uh, scratch building for those of you that are thinking about giving it a go. The more I do of it, the more I enjoy it uh, and the bolder I become, which may or may not be a good thing. So now on to the cavalcade. It's been quite a while since I showed all of the engines that I have. Um, they get to run out from time to time, but I thought it was about time that the people of Weathertop enjoyed a cavalcade in which every engine I have will pass over the, um, over the viaduct. Uh, so you get a view of the War Memorial with the trains running in front. So I hope you enjoy it. And I'll speak to you again once, uh, once that's finished. <music> Hope you enjoyed the cavalcade and indeed the whole of the uh, episode. Uh, I'm very pleased with the War Memorial. It's come out exactly as I wanted, uh, and I'm quite pleased with the with the planning of the townscape. Although even in the course of making this video, uh, I've made another change. Um, see if I can do this. If I pan slightly to the side here, you may see that here the double um, engine shed has gone in, and it actually goes much better there than where I was putting it the other side. So a single engine shed is going to go over that side. And that just goes to show that the business of building a model railway and planning it never finishes. Uh, and as far as you think you've got one thing sorted, you haven't. So that brings this episode to an end. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, it'd be great to have you along and hit the bell notification so that you know when I'm uploading. Uh, and finally, of course, um, if you've got any comments, please do let me have them. Um, I'm really grateful for anyone that takes the time to comment on one of my videos. Uh, until I speak to you again, bye-bye.